pondered over the tantalizing allure of MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy. This tiny pill, often adorned with playful symbols, holds a world of mystery within its compact form. MDMA, or if we're being scientifically precise, 3,4-methylenedioximethamphetamine, is a compound that's been captivating minds and bodies for over a century. Picture the year 1912. The world was a different place then, and in a lab nestled in the heart of Germany, a pharmaceutical company called Merck was creating history. They developed a compound, a synthetic drug, with the aim of controlling bleeding. Little did they know, they had just given birth to what would later become a cultural phenomenon. But like a wallflower turned party queen, MDMA found its true calling in the late 80s and 90s, amidst the throbbing bass lines and strobe lights of the rave scene. These underground parties, brimming with infectious energy and electric dance music, provided the perfect backdrop for MDMA's rise. In places such as Ibiza, the UK, and then Europe and beyond, the scene spread so that almost 10% of people have used ecstasy at least once. It wasn't just about the high, but about the collective experience, the shared euphoria. The chemical structure of MDMA is quite fascinating. It's a derivative of amphetamine, a stimulant, but with a twist. The methylene dioxy group attached to its core gives it a unique property, enabling it to interact with our brain in a way that's quite unlike any other substance. When consumed, this small pill triggers a cascade of biochemical reactions in our brain. It prompts the release of several neurotransmitters, the chemicals that transmit signals in our brain. This includes serotonin, the so-called feel-good hormone, which is responsible for the feelings of well-being and happiness that many users report. But MDMA is not just about feeling good, it also induces a profound sense of connection, empathy and understanding. It's as if the barriers between the self and others dissolve, allowing one to experience a deep sense of unity and togetherness. However, as with any substance that alters our brain chemistry, MDMA is not without its risks and consequences. And in the decades following its creation, as it found its way from the lab into the streets, clubs, and music festivals, the story of MDMA took some unexpected turns. From its humble beginnings in a German lab, MDMA has certainly taken a remarkable journey. So what happens when this little pill makes its way into the human brain? Well, let's explore the fascinating world of neurochemistry. MDMA, or ecstasy as it's more commonly known, works its magic by increasing the activity of three neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Imagine these neurotransmitters as your brain's couriers, delivering messages between brain cells. Now, serotonin is quite the social butterfly, affecting our mood, appetite, sleep, and other functions. When ecstasy enters the scene, serotonin is released in droves, leading to those feelings of well-being and happiness that users often describe. Then we have dopamine, the brain's reward courier. Dopamine is associated with pleasure and satisfaction, and MDMA coaxes it to work overtime, further amplifying those feelings of euphoria. And let's not forget norepinephrine. It's like the adrenaline junkie of the trio, influencing heart rate and blood pressure. Under the influence of MDMA, Norepinephrine takes things up a notch, which explains the heightened senses and energy often associated with ecstasy. Sounds exhilarating, right? Feeling charged, exalted and connected? But hold your horses. With every high comes a low. And in the case of ecstasy, the lows can be quite sobering. When the party's over and the brain's serotonin stores are depleted, users often experience a crash. This can lead to feelings of confusion, anxiety and profound depression, sometimes lasting several days. Moreover, MDMA has been linked to memory problems. Research suggests that long-term or heavy ecstasy use can damage to the hippocampus, leading to serious memory impairment, and it doesn't stop there. Some users report experiencing paranoia, hallucinations, and panic attacks. MDMA, like many other substances, has the potential to be habit-forming. It's a misnomer to say that everyone who dabbles in ecstasy becomes an addict. However, continuous use can lead to a dependency that's as psychological as it is physiological. The brain begins to crave the serotonin rush that ecstasy provides, and before you know it, you may find yourself in the throes of substance abuse. The cycle of chasing the high can be vicious, especially as tolerance to the drug quickly develops. Before too long, a person who could get high on one tablet often required 5, 10 or even 15 tablets, and when they stop using, the depression that follows can be debilitating. 
breaking free from drug use can be a monumental task. Next up, the risk of overdose. MDMA doesn't play nicely with the body's temperature regulation. In a rave setting, where vigorous physical activity is the norm, this could lead to a dangerous spike in body temperature or hyperthermia. Dehydration, heart failure, kidney failure, or even death could follow if the situation isn't managed promptly. So, while the allure of heightened senses and euphoria may be enticing, it's essential to remember the potential risks and negative effects if used too frequently and for too long. Like the two sides of a coin, MDMA's effects can be both exhilarating and troubling. So the next time someone offers you a little pill promising a ride to cloud nine, remember, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. There could be a storm lurking beneath those euphoric waves. Furthermore, the unregulated nature of the drug market means that what you're consuming might not be pure MDMA. Adulterants and contaminants and other drugs such as crystal meth can introduce a whole new set of health risks turning an ecstasy pill into a dangerous game of Russian roulette. Can there be a silver lining to the MDMA story? We're about to delve into the fascinating world of MDMA's potential therapeutic uses and the possibility of recovery for those battling addiction. Now I bet you didn't see this coming, but MDMA has recently been the subject of considerable medical research. It's being studied as a potential treatment for a severe and stubborn condition, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Imagine a world where a pill could help erase the debilitating effects of traumatic memories. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, it might be closer to reality than you think. Researchers have found that, under professional supervision, MDMA can help patients open up during therapy, enhancing the therapeutic process. It's like the emotional walls come crumbling down, allowing patients to address their trauma without the usual fear and anxiety. In these controlled settings, MDMA is not a party drug, but a tool for healing. However, let's not forget that MDMA is a potent substance. And like any potent substance, it can lead to addiction. Addiction is a complex beast. It's about more than just the physical cravings. It's about the emotional and psychological aspects too. And that's where therapy comes in. Cognitive behavioral therapy, for instance, can help people change their thought patterns and behaviors related to drug use. It's not a walk in the park, but it's a journey worth taking. Like many substances, MDMA is a paradox, a source of both potential healing and harm. It's a reminder that context matters and that substances aren't inherently good or bad. They're tools, and like any tool, their impact depends on how they're used. So, let's continue the conversation, let's continue the research, and let's continue striving for a world where substances like MDMA are understood, not feared.